In our previous example, we had created a slider that had a min, a max, an initial default value, as well as a step. But what happens if we wanted to show people what part was selected, such as highlighting part of the slider? Well, that's pretty easy. Inside of our text editor, I'm going to add a new option to our slider method. Now, my range can be min or max. When I go back into my browser, you can see how it highlights to show you what part has already been selected. But I can make additional changes to this as well. So, for example, I might want to change the color that is selected. To do that, I'm going to go back in my text editor, come up to my style tag, or I could also put this in an external style sheet, and specify UI-slider-range. This will be my CSS selector for this specific slider. This would be helpful if I had multiple sliders. Of course, if I want all my sliders to be the same, I simply wouldn't put my ID first. Inside of my CSS selector, I'm going to specify a rule. I want to choose background. It is very important that I choose background, not background-color, as background-color will not work. I come and refresh, and you can now see that I have a separate color, and it adjusts based upon how I slide my handle. I can also specify my handle and set a background color for it, or set a border color if I want to have that as well. Now, what about setting the range? Well, to set a range, I can make a couple small modifications to my selector. First off, I'm going to have my value. Instead of setting a single value, I'm going to set values. Values being plural, values being an array. So I'm going to set an open square bracket, my initial value, my second value, and a closing square bracket with a comma after it. This way I have my two initial values. Inside my browser, refresh, and you see I have my two separate handles. Right now you notice that when I click on it, it changes my value text to be whatever my current handle is. Also need to specify how to separate and select the color in between. So my text editor, the first thing I'm going to do is set range equal to true. This is going to highlight the section in the center. And now you can see my section in the center in between my two handles is now selected. Secondly, I'm going to modify my slide event handler. Currently, you notice I have slide text dot val UI dot UI dot value. So I'm setting whatever my current handle was that was selected. I need to be able to select both handles. I'm going to specify instead of UI dot value, UI dot values, and use my square bracket for my array. This gives me my first event handler. Then I can concatenate with a plus, a string, another plus, and then UI values one. Now arrays in JavaScript are zero based, so zero is the first one and one is my second option. When I switch back to my browser, reload, you notice now that you can see when I modify one handle, that part changes in my slide text. I modify the second one, the second number changes. And because we've concatenated a string in here, we have two, so we always can see the difference between two of the separate handlers displayed in one text box. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like and share it with others. If you want to keep up with other videos that are coming out, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. That way, you can get the most up-to-date information.